via telephone. Joe Funkhauser joins us. He's running for the House of Delegates in the 98th. Joe, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, Rob. I'm doing I'm doing well. Um, thanks for having me on, and good speaking with you, Bill, and Matt as well. Good to be here. Great to have you with us here, Joe. I've spoken with you in the past in this program about issues con- uh, regarding horse racing and uh, the in- industry in West Virginia, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. That is correct. Uh, a few years back. Yeah, what was your, what was your involvement with that again? If you could refresh our audience's memory. Sure, sure. I serve on the board of the uh, Charlestown Horsemen's Benevolent and Protection Association, and at the time I was lobbying for a trade association that represents the West Virginia thoroughbred industry called West Virginia Racing United, and I still serve um, on the board of the CTHPPA. But um, I recently f- filed uh, for delegate of the House of Delegates to seeking the Republican nomination. I'm a lifelong Jefferson County resident. Um, my family's been in Jefferson County for four g- generations. I am uh, you know, believe in the values enshrined in our Constitution. I'm pro-God, pro-gun, pro-life, pro-property rights, and um, that's – that's why I'm why I'm here this morning to announce that. But um, you know, certainly involved. My my family has been involved. Uh, where the it's a, uh, op, owns and operates at Sullivan Farms, which is the oldest thoroughbred horse breeding farm here in Jefferson County, and I believe um, in the state that continues to operate. Although the the Washingtons that uh, were were Charles Washington and his and and the folks of Charlestown were were racing horses down Main Street in their day, <laughs> that was before the state sanctioned it in 1933. And you better believe people were betting whatever the coinage was of the day at the time too on the their favorite horse. This is the Paul Espinosa seat. Paul, of course, is running for. Uh, state Senate, so he will not be seeking re-election in the House of Delegates. Uh, Joe, before we get into that, I know you just highlighted some of your issues there, but tell us a bit more about yourself and your background. Sure. You know, I, uh, I'm an attorney, um, uh, and I'm fortunate enough to have the opportunity to, to live in the same community that I grew up in. You know, I understand the struggles of seeking gainful employment throughout our region where there's a lot of opportunities, um, you know, uh, 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 across the West Virginia border and the D.C. metro region, and I actually commuted to D.C. for many years. Um, and have you ever sought elected office before at uh, a level um, of this nature, uh, whether it was uh, town council, city, county commission, anything like that, uh, Joe? I did, actually. I ran for state senate. It's a little bit of a deja vu for me because I uh, that in 2015 – Paul had announced that he was running for Senate, and so I live in in the district at the time it was the 66th, and now it's the 98th. Um, and so I announced for the House of Delegates then, and then Paul had changed his um, changed his mind, and so the Senate seat uh, was open, and I decided to. To, to go in that direction, and, and I ran for the state Senate, which was a little bit uh, more than I intended at the time, um, and uh, I ended up gaining 44 percent in the Republican primary. That was the largest turnout for the that senatorial district primary at the time. Um, and, uh, uh, my opponent was Patricia Rucker, who was your previous uh, guest this mm-hmm. week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bill- and um, – that you know, that's um, I've I've been. That was my last time I've, I've I ran, and it wasn't quite my uh, quite my time. Well, but I I feel professionally and, and and personally I'm ready to take this on this time around, and uh, I, I would uh, looking forward to the opportunity to present my candidacy uh, and offer my candidacy to the to the good people of the 98th district in Jefferson County. Bill? Yeah, uh, good morning, Joe. I've, I've read your uh, uh, the write-up or your campaign for the uh, uh, for the Senate race, uh, education, tax reform, uh, broadband, and the like. Uh, you mentioned your uh, your conservative Republican credentials. The individual you're running against, Barbara Fuller, also is a uh, is running on a very conservative platform. Is there a difference between your platform? What you hope to accomplish, and what Barbara Fuller is uh, is is seeking. Well, I personally don't know her, but I I 
I know certainly know what she has said publicly. Um, the one thing that struck me was actually her. I listened to her radio interview on this show from last year. Um, she did in the past where she described herself as stuck in Jefferson County. Um, you know, I feel blessed to be able to live in Jefferson County. Uh, I, I saw many of my high school and college classmates have to leave our areas in our state because they didn't have the professional opportunities they needed to grow and, and raise a family. So I think that's sort of one significant difference is I'm not stuck here. I'm here because I'm fortunate enough, um, you know, and this is my hill to die on, so to speak. And I want to pave the way for future generations to stay here and, and thrive in Jefferson County and West Virginia. Um, in terms of all the nuances, you know, I'm looking forward to a, a spirited campaign to see where we we uh, agree or, or disagree in terms of the, the policies. But in terms of, you know, I don't think anyone has a monopoly on, on the Constitution. Uh, everyone that gets elected has to take an oath to support and defend our Constitution. Um, and... I think you know the the I'm a, I'm a Republican. Um, you know the, we have a platform with uh, you know that, that that certainly has valid and legitimate principles, and I'm looking forward to a spirited campaign. The uh, uh, the issues you ran on as a Senate uh, for the Senate State Senate uh, have any of the issues changed, or there or will some be emphasized more than there were um, a few years or so ago? Well, you know, I'm actually – some of the, the, the specific issues I ran on, I, I, I was pleased to see that they actually got traction and, and they passed bills, you know, uh, eliminating taxes on Social Security, at least for the, the lower income. I hopefully, hopefully they can eliminate it entirely. You know, my, my theme of my campaign um, is, you know, I, I want to make West Virginia a more wonderful place to, to live. Um, work, raise a family, and retire. And, and we, we lose a lot of uh, really good assets of our community. When people look at retirement and they say, well, I can move to North Carolina or this other state because I get to keep more of my money. And, um, you know, I, I, I think uh, that particular um, aspect and, and you know, I look – I guess another distinction I would have with my opponent is she was – she's – uh, commented that she's very disappointed that w what's happened here with our legislature in the last few years and that there have been major improvements since the Republicans took over the legislature 10 years ago um, and then the governor's office a few years after this just huge strides of, of implementing policies and moving in the right the state in the right direction for, uh, to prosper for generations we've got major tax reforms the biggest tax cut in west virginia history allowing west virginians to keep more of their hard-earned money in their in their pocket you know some of the greatest school choice education reform in the country with charter schools and the hope scholarship to judicial reform uh it, it, it's so much more it's been incredible for the state and i want to build on that momentum um you know, we have a strong delegation from the Eastern Panhandle today, and probably the strongest, you know, in, in my lifetime. And I think I would like, you know, m one of my assets is, is uh, you know, be being a lawyer, having that knowledge, having experience in legislative advocacy, and you know, po politics is a, is a team sport, whether you like it or not. And and you have to be able to. Uh, work with people, but, you know, no one is going to agree 100 percent with every, every, on every issue with everybody else. But, you know, you have to focus on your shared goals and, 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 and work together. And we've got principles in the, in, in the GOP platform. And we've got, you know, you've got to have 51 delegates and 18 senators and usually the governor on board to, to get anything done down there in Charleston. Matt Miller. Joe, you've mentioned twice now being an attorney. Uh, what, what type of law and how do you see your position and, and your career as an attorney being an aid to you stepping into a legislative role? Well, I, I believe it's an asset. You know, uh, ever since, you know, I've, I've always been interested in the legislative aspect, and, and really the legislative branch is, is the most powerful when they are united or when they have super majorities it's the most powerful branch of government for, for the, as our founders intended um, you know and 
understanding and, and, you know, obviously the state issues, um, but as well as national issues. You've just had the, the Supreme Court and the 5 4 ruling dissolve the Fifth Circuit's injunction, basically, uh, with justice, um, uh, you know, with the majority of the Supreme Court uh, saying that there's not going to be irreparable harm and you have got an, of an ongoing invasion at our southern border. And, you know, there's the, this is. Um, it's it's disappointing and and it's frustrating and um, but there's things that states can do about it and and from being an attorney is is you know the the, the federal government and it's supposed to serve the state government and there's things we do where particularly West Virginia where we're very reliant on federal dollars and matching funds and there's there's a number of things we have to grapple with in our budget and to try and. Um, preserve our salary and work and be good partners. But on the other hand, if there's overreach, um, you know, we have to take a stand and be very measured in how we take that stand if there's an appetite there with the majority down the legislature on the best way to achieve the goals and results that, that we need to do to, to combat legislative overreach. Um, you know, they passed a resolution yesterday in the Senate on permitting reform. Um, there's ways we can coordinate with other states. There's great work that has been done by Attorney General Patrick Morsi with West Virginia versus EPA to combat federal overreach. But at a state level, you know, um, understanding the, uh, the legislation, um, having that background, I think, is certainly an asset. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to work with, with anybody and everybody and, and get their viewpoint and, and talk to the stakeholders, talk to talk to the people that, that um, have interests and particularly talk to and represent uh, the people from your district. And, you know, not everyone's going to agree, but work with work with everyone and, and to try and achieve shared goals. Joe, looking at your 2016 uh, campaign, uh, and a lot of what you were running on in 2016, you're exactly right, has been enacted, and you you gave credit to the uh, to the uh, legislators a few minutes ago. Uh, going forward, now, uh, is there are there one or two specific items that that you still feel that that you put your hang your hat on, say this needs to be passed? Well, I, I wouldn't say there's one particular bill that that is a must pass. You know, I, uh, you know, I'm. I think there's always room to improve. You know, on transparency, accountability, integrity, in in, in every area of our of our government, both state and local. Um, there's there's always a delicate balancing act in terms. You know, I'm always supportive of of the the best decisions that are are usually made by the, those people most affected, and that usually means you know local powers and local control. But on the other hand, you know, you don't want to have just this hodgepodge of of uh, you know totally uh, disjointed local rules where it's difficult to navigate the state where the you know. And, um, you know, agriculture is a big part of our economy. Tourism, or we've got industry here. Um, and, and, you know, the eastern panhandle in Jefferson County, we have unique needs. And, you know, um, uh, being in our region and, you know, I think the, the most important thing for me is to foster a stable and predictable environment for families and businesses and individuals to be confident in their decisions to invest and continue to invest in West Virginia for the long term. I mean, Jefferson County is the gateway to West Virginia for many folks coming from D.C. Uh, it's where almost heaven begins for me and many others. And, you know, from, from you know, all the different um, folks in our county and in, and in the panhandle and everything in between, you know, nestled in between the rivers of the confluence of the Shenandoah Valley, we, we really need to continue to improve on, on the good work that is done. And, you know, in terms of one particular bill, I don't, I, I don't say this is, this is the must pass bill for my candidacy. I, you know, you, you have to be reactive. There's, there's, there's thousands of bills introduced every year, maybe two, three hundred on, a, if, if it's a, if it's a good uh, year, um, you know, actually get passed. And, and, and frankly, you know, there's a lot of things in our code that, that hasn't been codified since 1933 that, that maybe need to be cleaned up more than, uh, and, and, and make it, you know, our, our body of work, our body of law, a little bit 
more user friendly um and you know but that is a long term project i'm not sure what the appetite there is uh um, to do that, but you know that would be sort of a long-term goal. Regardless, uh, uh, you know it's not going to happen in one session. But you know they, they do they they introduce these bills, um, but you know it just make, making things more um, improving the lives of the people uh, in the Eastern Panhandle, on Jefferson County, and in West Virginia at, at large. You know with, with conservative values. Joe Funkhauser is our guest, attorney at law, candidate in the 98th for the House of Delegates. This is the seat Paul Espinosa currently holds. Paul is seeking to become a senator, state senator, so this seat is up for grabs here in the upcoming election. Oh, del- House of Delegates. Did I say Senate? Yeah, you said Senate. <laughs> yeah, Paul's, Paul's seeking a seat in the yeah, Senate, so the right. House seat yeah. is, uh, is up yeah. for grabs here. Uh, uh, Joe, uh, this, once uh, Republicans took over majority control in the House and the Senate, they enacted some legal reforms in the state. By and large, uh, your thoughts on some of the legal reforms? I know there was uh, clamoring by business that we needed some of that in order to make West Virginia a more business-friendly state. Well, you know, in general, uh, you know, that's just, um, you know I, I support the, those legal reforms, but you, know, you have to, it's a, it's a delicate balance there where you have to, you have to have a fair system where you know the, the people that, that have been wrong can can uh, submit their claims but you know a lot of it is evidentiary rules and, and what's allowed and um, but the the legal reforms I think have been a net positive uh, you know fostering that stable and predictive business environment where folks have more confidence investing in West Virginia you mentioned the word foster so let's take that word and move right over to foster care and the Department of Health and Human Resources and those issues in the state of West Virginia. Clearly, the state uh, lacks uh, a lot when it comes to taking care of its most troubled children. And sometimes uh, parents in this state have to go out of state to get those types of services as well. And the foster care system for those parents who no longer are able to care for their own children, uh, overburdened. Uh, what are some of your thoughts in terms of fixing this situation in West Virginia? Well, I'm, I'm aware that, that, that it is uh, an issue. Um, it, 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 that there needs to be uh, more resources, perhaps public-private partnerships, working with some of the, the, the good community organizations throughout our state. Um, you know, I'm not an expert on this issue by any means, but, uh, you know, uh, I, we'll, we'll see what the legislature does to, to this session, and, and that's something I, I intend to study more diligently. Um, over the course of this campaign and, and, and over the course of this year, so I can give you a better answer. Um, maybe if there's another t- time we talk. Sure. What type of committees would you like to serve on, Joe, if you were in the House? Well, the two big ones are, are judiciary and, and finance. Most every major bill goes through there, so I would be, you know, happy with either. Probably judiciary, with my background as a as, a, as an attorney, would I would I would hope um, I would have consideration for uh, agriculture, tourism, um, uh, economic development. Those are some of the the major ones. Um, you know, economic development is has been an issue for for many years when John F Kennedy was uh, campaigning here at the Charlestown races during his campaign and it continues to be an issue today of of uh uh you know increasing our workforce uh participation and um you know building or growing our tax base you know we have uh, we have different issues than like i said the west rest, rest rest of west virginia you know we've got growing issues you're talking about impact fees in berkeley county we've had impact fees in jefferson county for 20 plus years um and uh you know a lot of the rest of the state that's losing population in the south they would love to have our problems but we still have to grapple with these problems uh nevertheless and and um i think you know being a lifelong resident of this county and, and understanding the issues, uh, the, the, the history, how uh, the legislature has been refereeing our, our local land use ordinances for, for the last few decades uh, gives me some insight on, on how to better navigate that terrain in the legislature. Joe, we've got about a minute and a half left. Your thoughts on the state providing financial incentives with tax dollars to companies moving into West Virginia? Well, it's it's a delicate balance there. Um, 
you know, I don't know all the issues now outs of, of with form energy, but um Yeah, you, know, you know the state has to get a good deal, and and you know the governor gets a lot of leeway on on these things. The legislature has to sign off on it, and you know you, we just have to do our due diligence, make sure it's a good deal um, that add value to the state and the community, provides good do- jobs, and and the risk is uh, is b- very slim and or non-existent you know and and the devil's in the details that's what they teach you in in law school everything is it depends it depends on the details and so you know we we just shouldn't be put in a position where we're we're holding the bag you know i know form energy was a big topic of dispute the last last year um you know that's that's our you know the northern panhandle that that was part of the rust belt and you know it's it's you know i'm happy to see that um, you know, the, the investments being made there. Um, I just hope it's a good deal. It's the best deal we can get. Joe, on that note, I thank you very much for your time this morning on our program. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you, Rob.